Hmm. It's been a little bit since I've been live, and I decided that this might be a good time. So, you know, there's some things that are coming up in recent uh, days that I'm noticing. I've been coming across information, which, you know, I don't even have to look for information. It literally drops in my lap. Women's moon cycles. We women are extra sensitive to begin with. We have that super strong, intuitive nature and knowing. And especially if you've done your own healing work, if you have tuned in and tapped into your body's wisdom, because that's how we know. When we are aware of how we take in information through all five senses, this is why a lot of times as mothers, I remember my mom, things like certain types of music. My mother could not stand abusive rap music when I was a kid. And at the time, I didn't think anything of it because I just liked the music beat, right? Isn't that what we say? I just liked to dance to it. I didn't think of it as any other way, any other thing. I didn't see it as derogatory because I wasn't caring about the lyrics. But see, that's how we're programmed. We take in information through our ears, our nose, our eyes, our hands. And we taste things. And all five of our senses are critical in honing and improving. Because if you don't know your own body and your own intuition, the into me I see, how would you ever know anything outside of yourself? You can't. You can't not know what you don't know, but there are things we know that sometimes we're not even sure how we know. Can you relate to that? The power behind the senses. And see, this is why there are so many addictive things out in the world, so many addictions to get caught up in, that from the moment we're born, we're told everything to think everything we know, every story we buy into is something we were told. We don't necessarily know it for truth. We know it because we were told it is. So it takes that deep inner search, that direction in life to, you know what? I want to heal this. Something in me is, has been saying for so long that I want to know. I don't want to be told I'm crazy or that that's not right. I don't want to be dismissed for sharing what I know is off. Get me? Because for how long have women been told you're crazy? You don't know what you're talking about. When in reality, a woman's intuition is the most powerful gift we have. That anytime we dismiss it because someone else dismissed us, that creates a trauma within us. And this trauma has been passed on through the generations. So you take on the traumas of previous women in your lineage. That's why when trauma has been passed on, you can't understand why you feel the way that you do because it's so much in your DNA. But when you choose to do the healing work for yourself, you heal Generations seven back, seven forward. Think about how powerful that is. That the moment you take that decisive devotional action to heal, you're not just doing it for yourself. It never is just for you. And most of us women know that when we do what we do. We know that we're not necessarily going out for instant gratification. In the land of the free, in America, have it my way. Do you think we have a bit of a narcissistic issue in this country? It's actually been uh, conditioned into us because everything is instant gratification, self-satisfaction, and yet at the same time, you shouldn't be so selfish. Funny, there's a tug of war going on in the world. It's been going on for a very long time. Tell you you're crazy, but yet show you the crazy. At what point are we going to wake up? Are we going to wake up to the truth of what is right in front of our face? That when they tell you the lies and you know they're lies, 
that they proceed to act out, never delivering what they promise. You can keep holding out just like that old parental figure when you were a child. You know, you held out because you were hoping they would eventually follow through, come through for you. But the truth of the matter is they could never do that. So now we have authority figures playing out those same roles and people holding out, expecting the best out of criminals in front of your face. How long will we tolerate? How long will we let this go on? Until every last person is suffering, in hunger, homeless, fighting with each other? That's inhumane. It's crimes against humanity when you divide and conquer in such a way you have the same people fighting with each other. You know this isn't real. These are the stories they tell you. And if you're willing to listen to their channels, channeling information, Hollywood casting a spell, cast of actors, telling a vision, hmm, their magic tricks are not the good kind. Black magic. And back in the days when they were burning witches at the stakes, what do you think? Probably the white witches. I myself have had those flashbacks. Flashbacks across all times, all of the different times that I lived in human flesh. Things I haven't shared before, things I don't need to, but if you know, you know. And the truth is in the blood because the blood has memory, people. There's always been a mass calling, coming after you especially if you don't go along and get along. Out of fear, people will cower. You know, sheep led to slaughter. Sheep should not fear the wolves, for it is their master that cuts their heads off. Let's look at the truth and stop denying the lies. We know better, we're adults here. No more time to compromise. At what point will you recognize your loyalty takes you out of your integrity? That when you think you're going along for the betterment of others, you're putting yourself at risk. You need to learn to touch into the core of your heart to feel. Because here's the thing, your spidey sense, your feelings, that's your power. And it's a sign. Those are the most real intuitive guides you'll ever get. Is that intuitive sense inexplicable? You feel it and you know it. And nobody needs to prove it to you. You don't need to prove it to anyone else. You need to learn to trust that more. You know, I speak about all the addiction facilitations that I've done over the years. And for those of you who have been following me regularly, you know what I talk about. Now I'm diving deeper. Now I want you to understand that when you numb out the pain, you are numbing out your joy. And that inhibits your intuition. It inhibits your ability to, to truly discern from truth and lies. But see, that's how we've been barraged and hypnotized because they know how to get to you through your eyes, your ears, your nose, your mouth, and all your senses. They know if they barrage you with enough, they hit you every which way, get you in total fear, or even seduce you, because it doesn't even have to be done with fear. They can entice you and make you feel accepted and embraced by their loving, caring, warming appearance the wolf in sheep's clothing, right? There is so much truth out there. It's sprinkled in with all the lies. And even the lies have the truth sprinkled in them. Why? Because it's where you get caught off guard. And if you don't know your truth about you, then you will be easier to manipulate and have the wool pulled over you. 
See, we women are multifaceted, highly sensitive. We need to be for the survival of the human race, for humanity. Men have been disempowered, emasculated, told they shouldn't cry or behave like a girl when they say they cry. We need to hold each other. We need to support one another and stop with all this. We women are so blessed to have the ability to sense what we sense. Your moon cycle is cleansing. We, we work with the moon. We work with each other. When we're around each other, we even synchronize together in our moon cycles because our pheromones giving off signal that time. That's why red tents ceremonies were so sacred because when women are together, we synchronize with one another. And funny enough, the more women you get together, synchronized, it's not funny, it's serious stuff. The more powerful the intuition, the witch's brew as they would call it. Women have been told they're crazy. No, we're spot on. The moment someone labels you as being insensitive or crazy, or too sensitive, I should say, my first response to that is usually, well, you would not like it. And I bet you'd notice if I was insensitive, right? <laughs> oh, so I'm really on here because I started down another rabbit hole because like I said, stuff drops in my lap. I may speak in code just because. Your moon cycle. Your moon cycle is the canary in the coal mine. Do you know the story of the canary in the coal mine? Men would bring canaries down to the coal mine because they would die if there was a toxic gas in the environment and they knew when the canary died, it was time for them to get out. Radon, for example. I'm hearing accounts of women's moon cycles being interrupted, stopping, excessive bleeding, children as young as five years old, elderly in their 90s, postmenopausal, and even women with, well, let's say that they're all bleeding, but the ones with hysterectomies, full hysterectomies, are experiencing the extreme cramping like they're having them. This is only from exposure to those who have decided to get the jab, okay? So I wanna know how many of you are aware of who you've been around that has had it. Because I'm hearing serious accounts. And for men, I'm hearing about enlarging testicles. Some cases it's causing surgery where they have to have them removed. Coming after our reproductive organs, didn't you know? It's been in the works for a very long time. It has been about sterilization, if not elimination of the female population. Now think about that. This has been going on out in Africa. There's a reason why a certain person is listed as a war criminal, crimes against humanity. Think about it. Follow the money trail, always. I could go way further into history, but you know, if I get eliminated here again, I don't know where I'm, how I'm gonna get my messages out because I'm really here to help people evolve, to grow, to find healing and peace because that's the only way we're gonna heal this world. I'm not here to argue with people or to point fingers at anybody because to be truly honest with you, I just wanna see people happy. I don't want people living in fear and thinking that somebody is carrying the plague because they're not complying with what they believe in. If you hadn't been listening to the media, would you even know what this was going on other than, unless you're living in a forest by yourself, going to the grocery store and being like, what the heck's going on here? Like, really? Be, to be able to do your daily activities, now you're restricted for a so-called less than 1% that supposedly are the, at risk, I don't know. I mean, really, if we were to really go there, I think all the history we've been told has been a lie. 
you know, there was a time where women weren't even allowed to write books. Women had to write under pen names because their books were not allowed. Why was that? One should question our history to begin with. I'm very fortunate I grew up with a mother that was all about truth, a triple sag. I don't think you could get any more truth seeking than my mother. From the time I was a young child up into this time when she passed three years ago, it's like, holy shit. And even the stuff she didn't say I got because it's in the bloodline, it's in the DNA has memory. I've actually had to sit with the exhaustion of awareness in my life. Being overwhelmed myself, wanting to serve and help. How can I do it if I have to be weary of what I say? Even telling my own true personal stories are at risk. Isn't that how my TikTok account was deleted off of my phone? Not even allowed to use this device. I have it on my other phone, but because I was doing live videos and I was sharing some of my personal experiences, that wasn't allowed. When you speak your truth, ironic, isn't it? Satnam, truth is my identity. Truth always finds a way. Truth always comes to light. Truth is, you cannot deny it. Powers will be, will try to sweep it away with their mass marketing, their ploys. Because God forbid our tax dollars are going directly to marketing it to you. Could they be any more blatant? I mean, just read between the lies. I mean, who lines? I'm really not a cynic. I was for a good portion of my life, especially with all the power trippers I dealt with during my time in the service and then government contracting. Yeah, when people feel threatened by you, they will try to punish you, find ways to discredit you. But you know, this cat's had many lives, more than nine for sure. And every time I come back stronger and stronger, it's called resilience. (sighs) And sometimes I also have to remind myself, everything is monitored, everything is listened to. because that's the environment I used to work. And of course, when you you carry certain clearances, you gotta think they keep an eye on you. They keep tabs on you. I remember seeing the documentation that showed and proved, and it was confidential, that spying on Americans is okay, that they do it, and they've been doing it for a very long time. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to believe that. Why would they do that? That's the first question, isn't it? When you're ignorant or naive, the first question will always be, why would they do that? And if it's going to bring anger, that's a good sign that you care. So this, this, the levels of consciousness, you have to have anger to show you care or you won't move up the levels of consciousness. Last year, we crossed the tipping point. This world had gone over what previously was thought would never happen. We have been awakening this world for a very long time. Those of us who have chosen, it's not that easy, by the way. When you choose to do the healing work on yourself, it's, it's really messy. It's ugly. It is some serious get in the mud. It is confronting your past, your traumas, and even some of your present beliefs, every belief you've ever had. Our biggest addictions are our belief systems. Do you believe that? (laughs) Belief systems are formed from those formative years. Give me a child to the age of seven and I will make him devout, is what the Jesuits would say. 
if you've read The Biology of Belief by Bruce Lipton. One of my favorite all-time books, though, is Power Versus Force by David R. Hawkins. And if you haven't read that, I highly recommend you do. He talks about the levels of consciousness. And I'm going to tie it right back to our bodies once again, ladies. There's a reason why kinesiology is utilized. Because the body is always telling on the mind. And this is what I taught in my rebirthing yesterday. And I was sharing that you have to remember when your body is exhibiting pains, that's a signal. It's saying there's something it did not align with that was going through your mind. Your body exhibits everything that's going on in the mind. The false beliefs are disease in the body. The ideas, the stories that your mind creates, create tension. It lodges stuckness. The rigid beliefs uh, are rigid back. Emotional problems, stomach, digestion, hip pain. Ooh, that's some really deep trauma. I mean, I can go on and on, but the truth of the matter is, is until you tap into your body's wisdom, you won't even notice it. You'll just think that the body is just, you know, making problems for you. But the body's always telling on the mind. As they say, the body keeps score. And the body keeps score so that you will eventually, and it gets worse and worse, it'll accumulate and get stronger, the pains, the disease, whatever, until you address it. And until you address it, it will linger longer. Mm. We can say, oh, it's because I didn't get this nutrient or I didn't get that or I didn't do this or that. It still all starts here. Even the rationalization of the why or why it didn't turn out the way you think it should. That crazy mind will come up all sorts of stories. But when you sit and you start recognizing, you observe it, you become the witness, you start your meditations. Sitting with yourself is not easy. I get it. I know, I remember when it first started. Just single mind and fo focus in itself because the mind likes to stay busy and active and it feels like if it doesn't, it, it's obliterated and dies. It's up to you to make the mind your servant, not become the master. Like you are the master, but it's the heart because uh, the heart will never lead you astray. It's the head that gets in the way. Same with our bodies, ladies, when we have a moon cycle. I used to be regular, regular. When I was younger, I went on birth control because I didn't want to get pregnant, right? I didn't like the way it made me feel. So I went off of it. And when I went in the military, I went on it again temporarily. And I did the Depo-Provera shot, which was the shot in the butt. I did that twice. And then I didn't like that either, the way it made me feel. It messed with my cycle. So to be totally honest with you, I stopped birth control altogether and probably when I was like 18. And then from the time on, I've never been on birth control again ever since. We never question what's in these drugs. You know, the same people that were telling us just say no to drugs are the ones pushing it. Are the peer pressure, are the bullying telling you you need to. But no, these are legalized forms of drugs. And you should trust them. Never consider that they're philanthropists for a reason, that there's an agenda and that all their companies are connected. Seriously. But our moon centers, our moon cycles, moon centers are the 11 areas of the body where your moon circulates through two and a half days, every two and a half days. So, <laughs> so ironic, so ironic what's happening right now. So again, Let's talk about the blood. Our moon cycles are like the canary in the coal mine. When we have a moon center that's off, that's a signal of your body. You need to lean into what's going on. If you don't already know, if you're just trying to like ignore it, there is a reason why it's happening. Is it something you're eating? Is it stress? Is it your environment or what you're exposed to? Are you nourishing yourself 
with downtime or are you trying to go, 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 go? Life is not a race, but it feels like it sometimes, doesn't it? Feels like a race. We're rushing to where? Rushing to what? Always in a, oh, I have to be there. Why? Why is everybody in such a rush? Slow the fuck down. If this last year didn't teach you anything, it's a good thing to slow down, isn't it? And it, it was a blessing and a curse at the same time, wasn't it? You got to learn about the people who, who were totally hypnotized and those who get it and some who are on the fence still. It's a good time because confusion is better than blindly being led. I'd rather someone be confused and interested and willing to do their own research than passive aggressively pointing back at, well, where's your research? Because they haven't done any. And because they're basically like parrots, repeating the same rhetoric and narrative they've been told and what they've witnessed and watched, none of it their own, from the time of birth, and they've never questioned any of it. So I have been reading a lot of accounts. Like I said, women all the way as young as five years old, bleeding all the way up to their 90s in elderly nursing homes. Women who didn't even need to be having cycles, bleeding. Women with full hysterectomies, not bleeding, but having symptoms. Their body is like the canary in the coal mine. None of these people have been jabbed, not one. Now I'm also hearing about people who have I'm hearing about miscarriages as well, too. And this is just exposure to those who have. Just exposure. Pay attention to who you're around. This is called shedding. And what this shedding, just like our pheromones, we emit. It doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman. We emit pheromones. Our body gives off more than the eye can see. You're worried about catching something? Now you got something bigger to worry about. We got the walking dead running around. We got the plague carriers. I don't know what this all means. I don't want you to turn around and shun people, but I am reading about doctors who are not allowing or seeing or treating patients until after at least two weeks of having it. Dentists won't perform on them. Two weeks. Two weeks. Doctors know about shedding. Why aren't they? Ta Why hasn't anybody talked about that? Why didn't they give the public information? Ah, oh, I'm sorry, because it would be misleading. Would it put fear into people? Like, unlike what is really going on, because God forbid you are informed with true informed consent. See, this is a problem. If you don't question things, and you're just going along to get along. It's your journey, your path. I honor that. I'm not here to tell you what you should or shouldn't do. But I would rather you be informed than just going along because of peer pressure, bullying, all these sick, toxic tactics they've been using on us forever. Trust your inner wisdom, your body's guidance system. You have all that you need within you. At what point have we become so trusting of man? You know, think about that. I don't know. I, you know, I was raised Catholic, but I'm not super religious because I also see that there were lies in the truth of the stories, but I also see there were truths in them, them too. It's part of keeping up the appearances. See, people couldn't read. They used to rely on being told back in the day. Remember this? So when people couldn't read, they could tell them whatever they wanted. They could perform a miracle, give the appearance of a miracle. Who knows if aliens were helping them back then with the technologies, you know, weather manipulation, floods with Noah. Come on, I wondered about that. These are the thoughts that go through my head. Some of them aren't thoughts, they're pretty real. And I have done my own 
inner healing journey and I have my own connection to source. I don't expect everyone to be there, but in my experiences, I, when I was a young child, I still had that connection to source. I still felt that connection to God when we moved to Maine and we had 25 acres of land and I could go out and just feel like it, I was in it. 1981, my parents knew that the crime was so bad in Boston, they wanted us to be safe. Not that a small town was that much safer given the circumstances, but at least we had a childhood with nature. I feel very blessed, I do, to remember what that felt like, to have never lost that, to have had to peel back layers of conditioning after that, having gone in the military and had all my experiences with authority figures, because God forbid a strong woman knows what the hell she's talking about when I used to call people out all the time, that gave me a lot of backlash. It doesn't make me a bad person, and I'll do it again with a smile too. Yeah. People will try to tell you you're crazy when you're talking truth. They will discredit you. They will try to twist your words. That's narcissism. That's a sociopath, a psychopath. These are people that don't want to be found out when you talk to them. It's called displacing the attention, passing the buck. It's not me. It's you. So I just encourage you to keep track of who you're around, any symptoms you're exhibiting. Men are, like I said, being reported with their, their testicles are getting enlarged, swollen, irritated. Um, I've been posting a lot more on my Instagram, Instagram stories especially. So if you are following the page here, some of them are coming from that in the stories or just start following me on Instagram. Um, this is important, ladies, women especially. Women are going to save the world because we're still sensitive enough to recognize in our bodies, and especially women with children, you already know as a mama bear, your child's the most important thing. And their wellness is depending on all of us. Every single next generation is depending on us right now. This spiritual war has been going on for a very long time. Now it's coming to the precipice. Now it's rise or die. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm still here to rise. I'm not going anywhere. Although tonight we have a constitutional history downtown Tampa. I encourage you to get involved with your community. Know your rights. If you don't know them, you don't know what you got to defend. The stuff they're trying to pull right now is all based in fear mongering. It's not real. Most of our pain isn't even physical. It's imagined. It's mental, illusory. Pain, when you, you have pain, I mean like physical pain, you know. But most people are operating from a deep trauma. The pain isn't even real anymore. They experienced it one time and they keep reliving it. We need to work on healing ourselves to heal the world. No more holding back, acting like, oh, it's okay, I'll suck it up. You know, I understand men were told to suck it up and they weren't supposed to cry, but some of us as women too, we were raised to suck it up buttercup and keep on pressing. Why do you think most of us burned out at a certain point because we were always on the go? I know what 12 years ago when I lost that job in Italy, that was really about the universe stepping in. It didn't matter the injustice of what occurred. What mattered is God, universe, source stepped in because I wasn't making the choice to leave that toxic environment. I was just trying to push through a little bit longer. Maybe I'll find another job. Maybe I'll get lucky. Universe said, no, 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 no. You're not doing for you. You're doing for the wrong reasons. Boy, that was humbling. It was extremely humbling back then. So that's a part people don't understand. If you're not doing things for the right reason, 
That's where the pain and suffering comes from. It's your own expectations. It's your own ideologies, your own belief systems. And if you're not questioning them, and you're still going on with the same, you're not evolving, because we have to change our beliefs, our patterns over time. It doesn't. It, we never stay the same person. Why do we do that? Why would we do that? Stay stagnant, stuck. Life is too rich. Oh, you know, I've got Monday through Friday and then the weekend. Even that drives me crazy. I can lose track of what day it is. Except for that, you know, yeah, okay, Sunday, certain stores aren't open. Like, it boggles my mind. We still do this Monday through Friday, Saturday and Sunday thing, like weekends. Like, people still look forward to the weekend. It's all ritualistic. It's all part of the, their stuff. Each day of the week is named after a planet. So, yeah, I'm putting a program together to join women where we can work on some healing. 11 weeks, two to three hours a day, once a week. If this interests you, let me know, reach out. It will consist of yoga, breath work and meditation, of course, but also some exercises some inner child healing, forgiveness of self and others, body awareness, food, mindful eating. It's really about mindfulness. If that appeals, like I said, reach out. Um, I'd like to start it in a couple weeks. We'll, we'll set up a private group. It will just give you that opportunity to connect with other women. I think the most beautiful part about it and the sacredness that I'm bringing to it is that it gives you each someone most likely new that you don't know. And when women who don't know each other come together and just start sharing, you don't feel judged because you don't feel like the people already know you. It's that opportunity to connect with new people. And how are we with new people? We're so much more supportive and forgiving and loving Whereas the irony is, is with the people we know the most, those are the ones we give a hard time to. If we treated everybody like someone we're just meeting for the first time, boy, the world would be a much different place. But we'll discuss that and many other things in this weekly call. And my plan is, is that we're going to be doing it most likely on free conference, which I have. And so that you get to see each other. It won't just be me talking. It's not about me. It's about the we. <sighs> that felt good. So I'm sorry to say that I did not make it to the next rounds of the Yoga Warrior contest, but thank you to everybody who supported me. I really, truly appreciate you. I have to admit my inner skeptic came in and said, how do I know this wasn't rigged from the start? You know, just to get them their followers and such. It happens. But you know what? It gave me something to work toward, a goal. And I really appreciate all of you that rallied behind me because that touched my heart more than anything. That showed me how much you care and support me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. That was about you more than me. And it supported me in knowing that I'm not, I know I'm not alone, but that I have people who value me. And I value you. So life has continued and I'm doing a lives on Instagram. In fact, after this one, I'll be doing another one. And you know, you can follow me on my other platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. I don't know, I've got to find another one. I, I have been a little burnt out from social media myself. I have been going into my own dark little crevices and still working on my own shadow as we all need to be doing and if you can't be your own guru and confront your own shit then that's when you do know you need someone else to help reflect we call it reflective listening and speaking and conscious communication we'll be doing a little bit of all that in the course because it's important that we learn how to communicate better with one another most of us weren't raised how to communicate effectively, let alone emotional regulation, 
let alone that it's okay to, to honor your emotions, whatever comes up, to, to feel what you feel and be good with that. That people don't need to hear, oh, you'll be okay. You don't even need feedback. In fact, I prefer people not say, oh, I'm so sorry you're feeling that way. No, just leave me be. If somebody asks me, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling a little sad. I'm feeling a little melancholy. I'm feeling this. I'm feeling that. I honor you. That's beautiful. I honor your courage and vulnerability to witness and to see and to hear that you are speaking your truth. That's what's going to heal the world, people, is you being willing to speak your truth. No matter how vulnerable and raw it is, that is the truth. That, that is what we need. We need that refreshing connection. That's who we are. We're not human doings. We're human beings. I love you all. I hope you're doing well. I will be back another day, probably this week. Enjoy your evening.